it's Sadie and today I'm super excited because one I'm filming a video that a lot of you guys have been asking for and that I've been wanting to make for a long time and two I'm filming with my new camera and I'm kind of testing it out and seeing if I like the lens and the camera and the quality so this is kind of like a test video I've never used a lens this thick in my life. Today's video is going to be a how I edit slash how to edit faster. So if you want to learn how to edit videos like a pro and really fast, you can upload more often. And also just how I personally edit my videos, then you guys can keep on watching. <laughs> The editing software that I use is Final Cut Pro X and I really like it. I've used Wondershare Filmora, which I know Grace Butler uses and I used and it's only $30 a year so that was really nice but then I upgraded to the big baby. First I will import all of my clips and I shoot my clips on this resolution. I will put it on the screen right here and it's pretty much overkill if you use 4K in my opinion because I was talking to a camera guy yesterday and he said it's literally giving the view four times the amount of video that they need to see on their screen and even if it's blown up on like a big desktop it's still way too many pixels and it's not really needed so you're just giving them way too much memory than they actually need or ask for. So first I will import all the clips into my computer and I will not only import them into my computer but I'll import them into the Final Cut Pro library and a tip for that and to make your editing a lot faster when you're looking through all the clips that you have is to go to the little time thing and make sure it's all the way down so that it doesn't show like tons and tons of the same clip. It'll just shorten it so that the timeline is shorter and you can look through clips faster. So then I would just go clip by clip, drag one clip in at a time and I will cut out pauses or boring parts or make little edits where I like zoom in or anything like that. Just kind of editing the raw file so it looks clean and fluid and pleasant to watch. Because you don't want to have a clip that's like this. And then the next tip is, you know what I mean? Like you want to cut out all of those parts. And while I am doing this, a lot of people don't use these keyboard shortcuts that I'm going to show you guys on the screen, but I use them because I think it's so much faster to edit with shortcuts than actually being like, control B, delete, and then drag. So use these shortcuts that I'm showing on the screen to rough cut your videos. It'll make it so much faster. So for the text and the overlays is kind of where you can get a bit spicy and just like kind of put a little bit of oregano on your stuff. Basically, this is where I try to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. For fonts, the ones that I use are mostly Lemon Milk, Georgia, and Helvetica New. We'll never know how to say that word. Those have just been a couple of the ones that I've used, but I use some more just if I think it fits the theme of the video more. In most of my fonts, I will adjust the tracking. So for example, this is just a regular Georgia font without the tracking, and this is with increased tracking. I think it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing and unique when you put more tracking. What I also like to do to text to make it a little bit more funky is to add a drop shadow or an outline. Next is audio and I get asked a ton where I get my non-copyrighted music because YouTube is definitely being strict than they've been in the past. I remember that Ryan Trahan was saying that he literally used like four seconds of a Taylor Swift song that was playing in a store that he was in and he still got copyrighted on that song. So I definitely suggest just not taking any chances and using all the non-copyrighted music. To find mine, I have a couple of YouTube channels that I just download their music from that just literally are channels for people who don't want to get sued or copyrighted or any of that stuff. A couple of the channels that I like are Bass Rebels, Vlog, Non-Copyright Music, Check Vibe Sounds, and there's a bunch of other ones. Another tip that I forgot to mention is if you're making kind of like a montage kind of video and you're doing the rough cutting, a good multitasking thing is to listen to the music that you're probably going to use into the montage while you're editing the montage just to see if it'll go with the vibe. So you can jam out two songs like this while you're editing. After everything is rough cutted and I've added the text and the overlays, I will then add in audio and this will be the background music, the sound effects, and the aesthetically pleasing clips that I put over some artsy music. And say you have a video where you have music but you also have a voiceover, sometimes you want the music to be louder when the voiceover is not there. What I suggest doing is using the range selector tool. You press the R key and then you select the part of the music that you want to be louder. This is so much easier than cutting out 
a whole chunk of the music, making it louder, and then cutting out a whole chunk and making it lower. The next part is my favorite part, which is the aesthetics. For my filters, I use the Pixel Film Studios Fresh Filters, and I usually use the ones Brighten, Soft, or Fresh Air, but I play around with them to my liking. And I will not go to every single clip and add in the filter. Oh, geez, if you are doing that, this tip is literally your saving grace. You can just copy-paste edits by doing Command-C and then Command-Shift-V where you want to paste them. This can be volume, crop, transforming, or the filters that you use, or the color balancing, or whatever. And a little life hack for you guys is if you don't want to spend a ton of time or money buying filters and putting them on your videos, you can just take someone else's video that you really like the look of, and you can download that. Then you can put it into your movie, and I know that Final Cut Pro has this option. I don't know if iMovie does, and then use the match color option. So you can just basically match the color profiles that they had on that video to your video to make it look basically the same. And that's definitely a little dupe instead of buying a whole pack of filters. After I am done doing all the edits to the bulk of the video, like the main part of the video, then I will make my artsy intro if it is needed for that video. And this is basically just B-roll of clips put to cool music and basically just intros what's gonna happen in the video and also adds a really nice artsy element to it. I will go in the library of Final Cut Pro, look through all the clips and see which ones are the most aesthetically pleasing or show what I'm doing in the video the best and then I will find some music on those non-copyrighted sites, make the intro and that's probably one of like my favorite parts of editing. Also another tip is while your video is exporting, make sure that you take advantage of that time, don't just kind of like wait or like scroll on Instagram. I would suggest making your thumbnail so what I always do is I usually just take a screenshot or if I was a good youtuber and took a actual thumbnail picture I will take that and then I will add text I will probably edit it using my Aspen Ovard presets and then I will upload it to YouTube let me know down below what other videos you want me to make and I really hope that you guys enjoyed it I would love it if you could subscribe and stick around and I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next video bye